In this video I'm going to show how I made an electromagnetic accelerator that propels steel balls around a circular track without any mechanical parts. It also works really well with ball magnets. It's made from four round track segments that snap together kind of like toy train tracks. The control board sits in the middle and it energizes an electromagnet coil to accelerate the balls as they come near it. What's so interesting about it is there's no actual contact with the spheres as they accelerate, they're simply being pulled into the middle of the electromagnet. So this is an exploded view of all the pieces that go into the assembly. It took a little over 24 hours to produce all the pieces of the ring accelerator. The top tray that holds the circuit board is just held down by magnets, so the battery underneath is easy to access if you need to recharge it or pull it out for some reason. At first I designed the accelerator to use 4 AA batteries, but I quickly discovered 6 volts wasn't going to cut it for this project. Here's the first version of the schematic. Power comes in from the female JST connector, and then there's several large capacitors in parallel, because my thought was I'd like to shoot a really high current pulse through a low resistance coil uh, whenever the sphere comes around. I've also got this manual test button, and then this is the trigger circuitry for the opto sensor to turn on the MOSFET. But I quickly discovered that this particular setup, I was blowing up MOSFETs pretty quickly. So here's the first version of the control board all built. Next I'm going to mount everything up, attach the leads, and then give it a test with the manual button. As you can see it works, but this setup is extremely sensitive to the timing of when the electromagnet energizes. This is what happens if the electromagnet just gets left on continuously. The ball will just bounce back and forth because the electromagnet will always pull it in from either side. To solve this, we're going to use an optical sensor to only turn the electromagnet on when the ball is on one side. So this is how I built the optical sensor. On one side, I have a really bright LED, and it's pointing directly at a photoresistor. When the light is shining on the photoresistor, it has about 2 kilo ohms of resistance, but as you can see, when the ball cuts the path of the light, the resistance goes above 20 kilo ohms. So let's return to our schematic to see how we can use this to our advantage. We're just going to focus on the circuitry that's connected to the gate of the MOSFET. The gate of the MOSFET is pulled up to 12 volts with a 20k resistor and pulled down to ground with the photoresistor. And as we just saw, the resistance of the photoresistor is normally 2 kilo ohms. This is when the path of the light is not being cut by anything. Using the formula for a resistor divider, we can find that the voltage on the gate, when the sensor isn't triggered, is about 1.1 volts. And this is far below the threshold value of 2.5 volts for the FET, so there won't be any conduction. But as we saw, if we block the light path with the metal sphere, the resistance goes up to 20k or more. If we use the formula for a resistor divider again, we find that we get 6 volts on the gate when the path of light is blocked. Referencing graphs from the datasheet for our MOSFET, we find that this will supply more than enough current 
through the fat to energize the coil. After blowing up a couple of MOSFETs, I redesigned my board and rewound the electromagnet coil so that it had two ohms. This way, only six amps can flow. So as you can see, I don't have the big capacitors anymore, and I'm using a smaller IRLZ44 MOSFET. After building the new board, I test the optical sensor just by sticking my finger in the path of light. And now for the fun part, testing the whole thing out. Definitely had no problem with steel spheres, so now let's try one that's magnetized. The difference is pretty clear to see. The magnet responds a lot better than just regular steel.